yeah, obviously uh, the IndyCar community and the racing community have just been really supportive of our family. When we lost Justin, everything that they did with the Wilson Children's Fund and, and the auction that Graham helped put on, uh, and, and every, obviously everyone else that, that participated in that uh, auction last uh, last October, uh, September, October last year, or sort of months ago. But yeah, just everyone's support in that time was hugely appreciated, and I know it's helped Julia, Jane, and Jess. And yeah, just uh, just very thankful for that. Will they be here on Sunday? They are here right now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Do they come to the track a lot, or is this... No, uh, Julia's obviously been to the track a few times uh, because of Uswag Socks. You know, she's uh, doing a great job of carrying that company on. It was a company that Justin co-founded at the beginning of last year. So Julia's sort of, you know, pouring herself into that. She wants to make that company successful in honor of Justin. So, uh, you know, she, she's been, she went to St. Pete and, and also came here um, many times over the last couple of days. So, um, yeah, check out those socks when you can. Um, the girls, the Jane and Jess, um, yeah, we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of days hanging out, and they've been at the track as well a few times. I got the, got the pleasure of being able to put them in my car on uh, Sunday night after it qualified. We got to uh, put them in the car, and, and uh, they had a blast. Sage Karen was now down there saying what, what, how much it meant to talk to, talk to you after the accident. What kind of things did you talk to him about? He said he took a lot of responsibility for what happened. Do you empathize at all what he's going through? Yeah, there was a personal conversation that I had with Sage, so um, not much I want to share right now, but, uh, you know, just tried to tell him that, hey, look, you know, it's it was kind of a racing incident, it's, you don't mean for that to happen, and, you know, going on, the best thing that he could do is, is try to embody some of the qualities that made Justin so special to so many people. How do you compartmentalize your first Indianapolis 500? It's a joyous occasion, it's something you worked so hard, talking to sponsors, working to get to this place and then having Justin not here to share it with you. I mean, how are you able to compartmentalize those two things? Yeah, it's been tough actually. You know, the last sort of week, you know, it, it's um, it, it's brought back a lot of memories, a lot of good ones. And at the same time, it, it's it's sort of making it um, it sort of really stands out that he's not here. You know, it, it it's. You know, there's certain times, certain certain days where, you know, you sort of feel Justin's presence and you, and you feel good about it. And then, you know, there's certain times where being on the track, you know, it sort of just makes it um, makes it very real that he's not here. So it, it's 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 somewhat hard, but you know, I'm just really focused on my job as a driver and driving the Driven to Save Lives number 25 car at the weekend and, and just giving that car, the, the, getting that car as high up as I can get it. How are you able to do that when you get in the car and say, okay, you know, we love Justin, we all miss him, and he's such an important part of our lives, but now I have a job I have to go out here and do. It's really easy, you know, it's what I've focused, it's what I've done all my life, you know, ever since I was nine years old, getting in the race car and focusing on, on my job as a driver. And, you know, that's, as soon as that helmet, that visor, helmet goes on and that visor goes down, you know, that's it. You know, we're focused on on doing the best job we can. And um, so that, that part is not being that difficult. It, it's, you know, the downtime, it's having family in town and, and the traditions that we had as a family, you know, sort of going through those traditions again and just him not being here to share in the, that, 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 those traditions. What are some things you do? Just going out to eat at night, you know, and, and for me, like qualifying, you know, it was every year for the last five years, it's been, I've been walking down that qualifying line, watching Justin get ready to go out there and, you know, it, it's just, it was kind of strange just sort of being on the other side of the, the fence, being the one putting the helmet on and, you know, just, you know, wishing that he was here to, to share in that experience. But, you know, just fun, you know, fun events around, around Indianapolis in the month of May, it's hard to name them, but, you know, just being here as a family, uh, you just really feel that, you feel that loss because he's not here. How important was it that you got to race against him in Baltimore a couple of years ago? You always will have that memory that you guys got to compete in the same race. Yeah, that was really special for me. Like, as a younger brother, I always looked up to Just. I was always so proud of him and what he was able to achieve. And I always, I worked so hard to get to that point where I could race against him. You know, we, 
we never got to race against each other in go-karts or in smaller junior formulas because there is a, that 11 year age difference. The only way I would able to be able to race against him is if I was able to climb the, the ladder like he did and you know to get that race there um, just meant so much to me and, and I know the rest of the family so uh, you know it was really cool I mean I, I obviously knew how talented Justin was and you know being his younger brother it, it, I always idolized him and was so proud of like I said proud of what he was able to achieve but being able to be his teammate that weekend and compare my data points to, to his um, it, it just sort of highlighted wow what an amazing talent he was I mean the stuff he was able to do in the car just his feedback it was so detailed it sort of really opened my eyes like the level he was at um, and the level I've got to try and attain well, you've been gratified by the response the fans have given you and so much love and how much they love Justin and, and really are transferring that there's so many more Stefan Wilson fans now today yeah honestly that's probably been like one of the biggest surprises for me this month is you know we're nine months on after losing just but for a lot of fans that I've met this month it's still you know hard for them and, and it's it's been really um, incredible just to see the outpouring of support by those fans I mean there's so many people wearing I've seen so many people wearing the Justin Wilson tribute shirts and like and like day after day I see many of them wearing it and it's it just it, it makes you smile inside and and lets you know that it's not just me and not our family that's missing him there's other people missing him too and a lot of people have come up to me and and uh, you know shake my hand and said you know what uh, told me their story about how they interact with Justin how they met Justin or how how nice he was to them and you know I, I knew that would be the case anyway he's always uh, I've uh, been known for being fan friendly, but you know it, it's really special to sort of meet meet those uh, those fans, uh, meet Justin's fans, and yeah, just really amazed by the support I've received this month. As a rookie, you know, to hear people shouting your name and and you know, sort of trying to get your autograph, it's, it encourages you, it makes you want to work harder, it makes you want to do a good job for those fans. Thanks for your time, appreciate it. Thank you.